so I'm going to talk a bit more how we build code in Elfric, and I'm going to talk also how we apply Cyclone in uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, Elfric. You have already heard about the needs for the DSLs. You have already heard about how some uh, information about how Cyclone works with the Elfric co co code and how it uh, util and utilizes the information from the Elfric co co code to uh, general to generate par par parallel code and apply optimizations. Now I'm going to give a bit more details and I'm also going to give a, some, some kind of a background in, in the sense how, why are we de developing this new uh, atmospheric mo model. So just to reiterate, uh, the name of Elfri comes from the from one of the pioneers of the of the numerical weather for, for, for forecasting, Louis Fry, Fry, Fry Richardson, and it is the new weather and climate modeling system developed by the UK Met Office to replace the existing unified model in preparation for exascale com, 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 computing. So Elfric uses the Gunkhoi dynamical core of which I'm going to tell in a bit. It runs on a semi-structured cube sphere mesh, as Andy uh, has already said, and it uses Cyclone to generate par 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 parallel co 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 code. So this slide leads to the uh, introduction uh, given by Carlos and Rupert. Why do we need the DS DSLs? What is the what is the what is the problem that we are trying to ta tackle he he here? And the main problem regarding the unified mo mo model is well in reg regarding the numerical weather prediction model models in general is that we need better quality for a forecast and climate projections. One of the main factors in that is to is increased resolution and that leads to the exist scale com com computation. So the current unified model is built on a lat long uh, stru structured me mesh where the grid spacing is narrowing towards the pole as you can see from the plot. So which means that if we want to run the model with the 25 kilometer uh, global resolution at the equator. That means we have 75 me meters of the grid spacing to, towards the poles. If we want to increase resolution to about 10 kilometers, this leads us to about 12 meters of grid spacing at the poles. That poses significant scientific pro problems, but it also uh, gives a cap on a scalability. So the conclusion was that we need a new dynamical core. And another pro 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 problem to address was that uh, building an atmospheric model takes a long time. We are talking about the order of magnitude of 10 years and more. And we are not sure about what are going to be architectures of the future. So we need to make porting the codes from machine to machine easier. And that led to the idea of flexible implementation, and that led to the idea of pro, of uh, pro, of uh, providing a model infrastructure. And this is what Elfric project do does. This is what uh, well, this is what the Elfric team in this entire project do do does. And I'm going to show you how we create uh, objects to help the scientists. So, um, so all of the rest of the slides was pre was pretty much sa said by people be before. So, as Rupert said, um, we want to have single source sa science co code. We we want to have performance por portability. Whether that is achievable or or or, or not, well, it is very very hardly it's very hard to uh, achieve. One thing that can help that is to generate pa parallel co code. So the conclusions from the Gangho were that we want to keep the best of the current Met Office endgame uh, dynamical co core, 
and improve where possible, for instance, the conservation pro pro properties and the, and the mixed finite element formulation for the new dynamical core was based on the results of this work. Uh, specifically, you can find more information what are the criteria for a good dynamical core in the Staniforth and Tuburn pa paper. And the time step, step, stepping was left to be uh, inspired by the current U, U, U unified model it, it, iterative semi-implicit semi-Lagrangian -la 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 scheme. Another conclusion as already outlined in the slide before is that we want to have a layered mo model stru structure where we have separate developments, uh, development teams for, su for, su for su science, uh, infrastructure and parallelization and optimization. As we said, we want to generate parallel code, and this is what and this is where Cyclone comes in. Uh, regarding, uh, so we also wanted to bring in physics parameterizations in the first instance to reuse the UM code where po possible, because uh, there is a lot of work uh, go, go, going on in the in the parameterizations and re and and rewriting them for the new mo mo model is not re re really fe feasible. Uh, he he hence the already mentioned ev evolutionary approach in Cyclone works really well for, for, for us in, um, in, uh, in, um, in this case. And to support this model infrastructure, it was decided that we are going to do the infrastructure in an in, uh, object oriented way, way. We did choose to go with object oriented Fortran, which I can tell tell you is not the easiest and um, and and carefree way to do ob, ob, object or, or orientation. And the compiler support is about where the C++ uh, compiler support was 10 to 15 years ago some some features uh, are supported some are not and we are and we constantly have to try out new uh, compilers and different compilers to see what what the code will be building so how do we prepare for exascale so the current unified model and end game dynamical core are working on staggered finite differences and on fully structured let long me mesh and they have hard-coded optimizations. In Elfric, we are applying the mixed finite elements as the main numerical uh, spatial discretization scheme. And as Andy sa sa said, we are operating on horizontally unstructured, vertically structured, quasi-uniform mesh. And we are utilizing generated optimizations. So to have a step back to see what we are actually dealing with here. So the current uh, numerics in the UM is find a difference model on a structured me mesh. So that means that you have stencil accesses for the mathematical operators such as Laplacian. It also knows that you have a mesh layout ex ex explicit in the in the in the stencil indexing you know your your lo location and you know your connectivity that, that are na 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 neighbors so a semi structured mesh poses a pro a, a problem you have lost your horizontal uh, adjacency so you need to provide uh, that information and this is why the Elfric uh, infrastructure is essentially a collection of cla of cla of classes that deal with the relevant data and they have procedures that 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 operate on those da da data. For instance, this global 2D mesh uh, gives uh, holds information about the mesh, uh, the 2D mesh entities. What are their global 
IDs and it also has the lookup uh, uh, arrays that and the ma ma mentioned to see who, who are your na na neighbors. So uh, the choice in Elfric after that is to first divide that global 2D mesh into partitions. Uh, so one uh, so one partition works uh, on one MPI pro process and that uh, object then needs to store information on, stra on, on, on strategies such as ranks and mesh type. It needs to know the range of cells, the owned cells that are that belong to the partition and the halo cells and it, and it also uh, has interface to distributed memory communication for which we are using the external library called YAXT. So that uh, partition is then combined with the local three with the uh, extrusion as can as can be seen from the from the uh, from from the picture to create a local 3D mesh for each of the partitions. So in this case, we are storing things like uh, the mesh entities, vertices, edges, faces, and cells, the local IDs in this 3D partition me mesh, and the connectivity. So as I said, horizontal adjacency is lost, but we still have vertically adjacent cells contiguous in memory. So the logical sense, uh, so the uh, a logical thing to do is to operate on columns of the da data. Now another big difference regarding uh, in comparison with the finite difference me method is that the finite is the finite elements themselves. So in a finite difference method, you are essentially uh, using a a polynomial of a certain degree to uh, to create your st 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 stencil for mathematical operations. In finite element me methods, you are using polynomial approximation, uh, which uh, and the uh, where the where your physical qu quantity is expressed as a sum of di times uh, which are which are the which are the which which are the coefficients in this polynomial uh, uh, approximations and the sigma i which are the ba 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 basis fun 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 functions so as you can see from from the from the from from the from the slide so in the slide uh, there is a picture of the second order polynomial uh, quadratic fam in 1D, and uh, above the basis functions, you can see that where is the location of the data po po points, or also called degrees of freedom or do DOFs. So the degrees of, so as I said previously, you need to start from the from the 2D mesh, go to the partition, use the extrusion to build the 3D me mesh. And then you need the information about where are degrees of freedom located to build a function space uh, object in Elfric on top of that. And that information is that used to create a field object that holds the data that needs to be uh, updated. So another big uh, thing here is that we have a hierarchy of function spa spaces. So we don't have physical quantities all, all li 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 living in, uh, on the same, in the same locations of the me mesh. We have, a, we have function spa 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 spaces for, for which the entities are, uh, are, are living on the on the vertices, on the edges, and on the fa fa faces. So these function spaces are called continuous function spa spa spaces because the degrees of freedom are shared between na between na neighboring cells uh, in the in the horizontal or in the vertical or both. From from cyclone point of view, because we are operating on column of cells. 
the continuity information is primarily important for the for for the for the looping over cells inside la la layer that uh, that Andy mentioned. We also have this continuous function space, space, spaces where the degrees of free of free of freedom are not sh shared be between cells like this W3 space, space, and these are much much easier to uh, update in parallel. So for those of you who are familiar with the current UM endgame dynamical core, uh, the lowest order function spaces pictured in the top row are, 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 are looking very, very sim similar to the current pl placements of uh, physical quantities in the endgame dynamical core grid. And this is uh, Ar Arakawa C in horizontal and Charney Phillips grid in the vertical. That choice is intentional to uh, facilitate, uh, well, fir firstly, because of good numerical properties, and secondly, because, as I said before, we want to integrate the, the existing UM scheme, 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 schemes. So, to sum, sum up, in order to support all this science, uh the we have this L, we we have this uh hierarchy of classes in the elfric infrastructure from global 2d mesh to a field and infrastructure uh, performs several functions in elfric so it provides support for science operations it constructs and handles data objects pictured on the, on the left it also provides support for distributed and shared memory pa parallel parallelism in collaboration with Sa with Sa with Sa with Cyclone. Uh, the information su such as DOF map co co coloring for uh, function spaces with a shared degrees of freedom and halo exchange, and in interfaces external libraries such as Yaxt for MPI communications and XIOS that we are using for parallel uh, I.O. And now <clears throat> we come to how are we explicitly implementing this in the Elfric co co code. So this is uh, basically a slide that Andy has mentioned before. We have the cycle separation of concerns where the algorithms are operating on whole field on whole field objects the kernels are uh, operating on data points of these objects uh, as andy mentioned if you want to calculate a gradient of a field you need to write a kernel in elfric to do that and then call this kernel in 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 the algorithm in the algorithm layer so that uh, so the algorithms and kernels co communicate through the parallel C, 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 C systems or C la 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 layer, which accesses field data and applies optimization, and this is generated co 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 code. So just to make a point, in the Elfric repository, we are storing the algorithm and kernel co code but not the parallel systems co co code, not the site layer co code. We are generating that for each mo 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 model run. run. There, there is no point in, uh, say in saving it, precisely because those, uh, flex uh, those optimizations are supposed to be automated and fle fle flexible. On the top of all of that, we have the usual driver la layer, which uh, sets up and control the mo model run. So how do we use Cyclone in Elfric? So the primary purpose, as said before, is to do optimizations, is to generate optimized Cy layer co co code. And um, as it was mentioned before, there is, there is work on there is work in progress on uh, tra on transforming the, the the kernel co code. 
It is also very useful for development. Uh, Andy and Rupert have mentioned fparser2, which is based for the L-free code style che checker. And one a very useful uh, uh, tool that we are going to be using today in the hands-on tutorials is the kernel stub generator. So the argument declarations and ordering required to pass the information to kernel from uh, the algorithm layer can be quite complicated and the kernel stub ge ge generator uh, it ge it uh, well it basically cre creates that uh, information for the elfric de 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 developers and uh, some other tools are profiling and data api and jorg is going to talk about these tomorrow tomorrow to, to, tomorrow so how do elfric and cyclone work together so from elfric side uh, we are uh, so there are rules about how to write al algorithms and kernels and what are the data pro pro property these rules comes in the come in the form of the kernel me, me, metadata and the um, and the uh, and the invoke DSL syntax that Andy has mentioned and the Elfic also provides the uh, infrastructure support to for uh, uh, for optimizations. For instance, the DOF maps, uh, the support for co 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 coloring and uh, MPI co calls. So in return, the Elfric or Dynamo 0.3 API in Cyclone provides flexible optimizations, uh, support for data structure and properties following API ru ru rules. Now, in the bottom of this slide, you will notice something called Cycle Lite. So this is our testing and development gr ground for the for the required fu fu functionality that we would like Cyclone to have, but it is either in development or we are te testing it uh, or it has not yet been implemented in Cyclone. And as I said b before. Uh, the kernel stub generator you, you, you utilizes that kernel metadata and the Elfric API rules to create the argument list and declarations. Right, so this is a more detailed version of the slide that Andy has show, show, showed. So I'm just going to uh, go through this because this is the procedure that we are going to follow in the tutorials. So in the algorithm la layer we have pseudo code aligned with the written equations to an extent. There are still Fortran calls. There are not high level rep 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 representation that Carlos mentioned where we can uh, write an equation like code. So the uh, so uh so as andy ma ma mentioned we are calling these pseudo for 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 fortran to call it this way invokes on the in on the entire field of ob objects so that gives information to cyclone that it needs to use the kernel uh, layer me metadata to see how to unpack those data from the entire field objects to column of data that the kernel can operate on. So using that information, Cyclone then uh, processes the algorithm code and, re and, uh, and, re and re replaces the invoke keyword with the call to the generated Sci layer routine. And in this routine, it calls kernels for each co column and it provides shared and distributed memory parallelism and other optimizations. Uh, the kernel layer does uh, updates on this field data. Uh, one other thing that I'm not sure was mentioned is that 
are built-ins, which are which is kind of um, a linear algebra library provided by Cyclone to do arithmetic operations on entire fields. And this is what we are going to do in the second tu tu tutorial. And all of that, as I said, is supported by the Elfric infrastructure, which provides support for the parallelism, how to unpack data, how to, uh, how to uh, access them, and so on. Right, so this is an example of the algorithm co code. So according to the separation of concerns, as I said before, this is written by some scientists. So in the middle, you can see the example of an invoke, which calls a couple of kernels. You can recognize the kernel calls in the algorithm layer by some kind of a base name, kernel type. So the base name in this case is R th 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 theta. So this specific kernel is uh, taking se se several fields. Uh, one important convention is that the object whose data is written to is always on the left. So in this case, in the kernel call R, th R theta kernel type, we are, we are updating the field LHS, LHS temp, and we are using the input or read only fields theta ref, u and qr to, 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 to perform that operations. Below that, uh, you can see a built-in call, call, and this specific built-in is uh, adding up to fields. And, uh, and one of them is uh, scaled by a scalar B. So uh, the convention for the ordering of the arguments is the same in the case that the updated field is always on the le left. Okay. So we have said that the uh, information about continuity of the function spa space is important uh, because we need to know whether uh, the cells are sharing those between cell between themselves or or not to know how to update them in parallel. This information about the continuity of function space is encoded in the in the kernel me metadata. So as you can see, uh, we have examples of two discontinuous function spa spa spaces, which are marked in blue co color here. So one is a WC, th th theta, which is kind of a version of, of uh, uh, well, it has slightly different pl placement of the, of the degrees of freedom than, the, than W3, but is essentially dis discontinuous. And then we have a generic metadata for a function spa space for a discontinuous fu function spa spa space where we know that the data are not shared between cells in the horizontal, but we don't know where precisely they, they are. And this is, for instance, something that we are using quite a lot in the um, Elfric interfaces to UM physics parameterization scheme, 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 schemes because we are not uh, rewriting that code, we are using it as it is, but we still need to uh, provide some information to uh, Cyclone to know how to, uh, how to loop over those in interfaces. Below that in red co co color are the examples of metadata for a continuous function spa spa space and these ones are sharing degrees of freedom be be between them. So for instance, uh, W2 function space, which is pictured on the right, that's a velocity space and also a generic function space metadata, which is called any spa space. That can be used for continuous and discontinuous function spaces, and this is what we use when we are not sure whether the DOFs are shared or not. And that 
that is a, and there is a penalty there uh, in a sense that we need if we don't know whether DOFs are shared or not we need to assume that they are so we need to uh, so we need to put halo exchanges there the second me metadata GH read write ink and read are showing uh, whether the whether a field data is read from or or updated and as you can see the first one simply sa 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 says what the object is in this case it is field and as Andy said uh, before the kernels are iterating uh, so the so so, so cyclone loops or over cells in the layer to call kernels and this is uh, indicated here by the iterates over cells metadata so why are we uh, why are we reiterating all this um, information about whether a function space is continuous or, or not well, simply because uh, we need to know how to safely update the field data in parallel. So the continuous function spa 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 spaces when applied in kernel co calls, if we want to update the fields on them, we need to use metadata GH inc. GH inc means that uh, when applying open MP this needs to be done with co 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 coloring which is something that Rupert will show in his shared me 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 memory to 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 tutorial tomorrow tomorrow and for this continuous fields it really doesn't ma ma matter because uh, the, sh the DOFs are not sh shared so for them we are using different access gh read write if we want to update it or gh write if we want to just write to it which means basically this is this continues don't do co coloring so we have gone through the me me metadata and metadata is the part that tells uh, cyclone how to unpack data and what kind of additional support from the Elfric infrastructure to apply such as coloring and so on if when the when when the fields are updated in parallel now we come to the part of the kernel that actually updates a field and this is science code for a for a column on of uh, of of uh, of lay, 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 for a column of cells or in this case n uh, layers looping from k equals zero to n layers minus one basically me basically means that you're starting with the lowest cell in a column and then you're and then you're working your way up upwards so the current convention uh, which stems from making it easier to write a science code is to have the k uh, loop over cells outer and then uh, in each cell you need to uh, you need to update the dofs that are belonging in the cell and that, and that is the dof inner loop and this is what we are going to practice in the first tutorial to create a simple kernel so there is uh, ongoing work to try different loop reorderings uh, as part of the kernel transformations and there is ongoing work from both Elfric infrastructure and Cyclone to try different lay layout of the field da data right so this was the introduction now I suggest that we start following the provided li links so can you so how are we here in the terms of uh, accessing the P P pdf shall i just um, open a new window he 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 here and go through the uh 
and go through and 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 go through the do, 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 documentation or that's um that's up to you Eva um okay in the in the previous one we just let them go and, and read the things themselves and just help them on slack if you think it'd be better to go through the document um as you go along feel free otherwise I think they can just go off and, and do it if you explain what to do and where to go okay how are we with time uh, you've had about 40 minutes of the 90. okay right so uh let so how about that we try to so how about that uh you try to okay so let us move to the first to tu tu tutorial then then so uh just to give a quick introduction so uh each of the tutorials follows the code structure in elfric where we have a driver layer that sets up the elfric object stack and then does the model in it initialization and control of the model run what we need to do in this tutorial is to update the kernel uh, la layer which is metadata and the loop stru stru structure and do the uh, algorithm la 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 layer and then use the provided make scripts to create the generated algorithm and sci layer so let's go to the part for the first two, 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 tutorial uh, i am going to uh so i suggest so um how about that we do this we uh, i'm going to uh, open this documentation and goes and go through the steps for the creation of the first kernel and then i will leave pe pe people to uh to do the uh, the uh, the uh, the other bit, bit, bit. Uh, 